Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Radio Show, a division of Authors Marketing International, an organization that supports authors and writers all over the world. My name is Marianne Fairmouth, and I'm your hostess for tonight's episode. I'm really excited tonight uh, and, and uh, thrilled to be able to uh, interview a, a very, very well-known author that um, has written over 50 books. And uh, not only is he an author uh, that writes, but he also has many programs that support writers and authors all over the world. And um, uh, help me introduce and welcome William uh, Burkhart with, um, uh, he's done so many different things with uh, best-selling authors and uh, also the founders of Red Sneakers um, uh, organization. Um, Bill, uh, say hello to all of us. Hey, Mary. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. Uh, Bill, you, you've done so many wonderful things and, and you've written wonderful books that are very much Thank like... The, uh, the very famous John Grisham, who writes legal thrillers. Uh, tell us how you got started and uh, kind of uh, what, what prompted you to write in this fashion and also uh, to support authors all over the world. <laughs> well, that's two different questions. I'll start with the first one. How did I get started? Uh, I mean, I never thought about doing anything else for any lengthy period of time. I always wanted to be a writer. I, if my mother is to be believed, I think we have to, because she's my mom. Uh, I was talking about being a writer when I was seven and going to the library every day and reading constantly. And to me, being a writer, other people had other dreams. I understand that. But for me, being a writer was about the coolest thing anybody could ever imagine being. So I read constantly and I wrote constantly. And eventually, actually not that far into the future, sent things out. I got my first rejection letter when I was 11, which I still have, by the way. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating when I say hundreds thereafter, but, uh, you know, I'll fast forward now. Eventually it worked out and my, uh, mostly due to perseverance and refusing to, you know, quit. Uh, my first book was published in 1991. That was Primary Justice, my first trip into the courtroom in fiction and I've been going ever since 55 books in print now and uh, and they're all still in print and that first one and the series it started still you know people are still reading it still sells copies well that's wonderful and uh, I think there's a real lesson here for all of the writers and one of the writers and authors that are listening to this program because I think when we hear a no and no, oh we need to look at that bill that you don't know, K-N-O-W, what we can do if we keep persevering. And uh, I know you're a lawyer by trade and uh, lawyers by trade obviously are very good writers, but um, how, how did you get into the legal thriller area? I mean, um, how cool is that? I mean, I mean, you know, what kind of a lawyer were you that prompted you to, to do that? Were you a criminal lawyer or? or no, not primarily. Like I was a trial lawyer, a litigator, but not so much criminal cases. Of course, when that first was book had, was published, I was only uh, five years out of law school and fewer than that when I started writing it. So I really wasn't so much writing from experience as creating a, a world, a milieu that I understood. You know, people ask, are your books based on experience? Well, what part? You know, are these uh, twisty and <laughs> plots and, and murder cases and whatnot based on my real experience? Obviously not. But I understood how a law firm worked and I understood how the courtroom worked. And that was an environment that I could bring to life. I, I mean, that when, my, when I was writing and even when that first book was published, the term legal thriller hadn't been coined yet. I was trying to write a mystery novel because I did start reading mysteries in college and loved those kind of classic golden age uh, mysteries. And, and that's what I was trying to do. I just said it in a contemporary world that I understood and it clicked. And I did 
some more. And of course, as you well know, as the 90s progressed, John Grisham came along and others, and people started talking about legal thrillers as a genre, which to me, I thought, thrillers, really? I mean, I don't really even read thrillers. That's, <laughs> I didn't feel like that was anything I knew anything about. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes you just got to dance with the girl that brung you. And that was the case there. So I started adding more thriller-esque elements. Uh, it's funny, you mentioned John Grisham, who I admire. I know a little bit. We've talked and, and I admire very much. But I, I, I think our books are sort of the opposite end of the spectrum, particularly with his early books like The Firm, which, of course, was a huge hit, The Pelican Brief. Those books are thrillers. There's a lot of chase, but not much legal. You know, the, guy, the characters never go in the courtroom. In my books, there's a lot of legal, but a lot less of the car chase and the gunplay and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm much more interested in characters and plot and those surprises that make readers, you know, eyes fly open and think, what? Didn't see that coming. To me, that's the fun of it. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I know for me, you know, I'm also an author, a multi-genre author, and I know, I know. for me there was a certain episode in my life that prompted me to write and uh, I wonder with you, um, was there a certain case or something in your life that, that or was it something, a passion you had all you, I mean, you said as a young child, I think as 11, you started mm -hmm. writing. So it was something that you just kind of had, you know, why are you were wired for it? It was kind of part of who you were. I mean, was there something that prompted you or not? No, I always wanted to write. That was always my ambition. I went to law school because, you know, here I was about to finish college and Astonishingly, I had not written that great American novel yet that made me a multimillionaire. So it occurred to me that I probably better learn how to do something <laughs> that <laughs> could pay the bills. And law school seemed doable. You know, it didn't involve, you, you didn't get sweaty. Uh, you didn't have to understand math. I thought I, law school I could handle. What I didn't re realize was that I'd be using that over and over again through the years in my writing, which was always my my first dream. The one aspect that I, I might have uh, clipped from real life, which has nothing to do with plot, but everything to do with character. I had been through law school fairly recently when I started this book, the first book, Primary Justice. And I had seen the transition people make going from law school to real world. I, I know sometimes people are cynical about lawyers, and but uh, when I was going to school, so many of the kids that I hung with were so idealistic, you know, they were going to save the world, they were going to preserve the rainforest. And so often the transition from law school to real world is difficult, and perhaps disillusioning. And that was something I got. And that was something I infused into Ben Kincaid and the other characters in Primary Justice, which I think gave them maybe a little bit of depth and a little bit of heart that people, even people who weren't lawyers, but still they could relate to that, been there, know what that's about, you know? Okay, uh, Bill, tell us what, what prompted you to, to use your, your passion for writing to, to help others, to, to um, essentially, um, you know, use their, their ideas about writing and, and help them expand their, their craft of writing. What, what prompted you to do that? Sure. Well, like I was saying, I, I always wanted to be a writer. I grew up in a small town in Oklahoma and there were no writers <laughs> and there were no writing schools and writing conferences. A uh, few people knew where I, what I wanted to do, but how do you do it? You know, uh, there, there was nobody around me who knew. It was not until I got to college that I met a few people who knew a little bit, although never bumped into any, you know, actual successful writer. I think the first time possibly I met a real uh, uh, publishing professional New York published author was one day when I saw one in the mirror, because <laughs> it had just <laughs> happened to me. Anyway, I understood how frustrating it was to want to achieve something, but not be able to get good information on how to do it. And that's really where my Red Sneaker Writer Center came from. Started with the books and then expanded into small group seminars. And now we do the annual Writers Conference every Labor Day weekend, WriterCon. Website is writercon.org. 
if you think that might be interest, if that might interest you, I do a regular newsletter, e-newsletter. We do the podcast now that comes out every other week. It's all about getting information to people who write or aspire to write. Well, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah, well, it's, it's more valuable now than ever before, I think, because today's publishing world is so dramatically different than what it was when I started 30 years ago, 1991. There are so many different paths to publication today, so many legitimate ways that people can end up getting their work in front of writers, readers. And I think that's wonderful because you know, I'm pro-author, <laughs> obviously. Anything that helps writers achieve their dreams, get their books read, get them published, I'm in favor of it. I, I don't, you know, I'm not a snob. I don't favor one. I just want authors to have opportunities. And there are a lot out there now if you know what they are. So that's what all these programs are about, getting the information to the people who can use it. Well, we're thrilled to have you on Indie Beacon Radio because we are uh, certainly um, in the same element that you are to promote right. writers and authors. So let's take a break for our uh, sponsors and we'll come right back. Marianne Fairmouth is a career consultant with 30 years experience in the national recruiting world a multi-award winning author in multi-genres, and a speaker that gives presentations to help you succeed. Her book, Revolutionary Recruiting, made the top 20 global list of recruiting books. Find her on Amazon, your favorite bookstore, or at fairmont.com. Arthur Denise Bryson. My first book is The Things That Crossed My Mind, Inspirational Poetry with Life Lessons. And then my audio book is Love's Reality. And it is also inspirational poetry with a jazzy flair. And then my new book is The Sex, The Lies, and The Soul Ties. They're really short stories uh, written from a poetic uh, expression. And then I have my first children book series, the Blinky series, which the first book is called Meet the Coins, and it is both in English and Spanish. And then the new book uh, from Coins to Bill. I am the author, Denise Bryson. Looking to embrace your children's imagination? Check out Diane Floyd Bames' books for kids. There's The Moonling Adventures, all about the animals in the Serengeti. And then there's Harry the Camel, learning to love yourself just the way you are. And then The Little Girl in the Moon. There's one about friendship, another one about the big ideas, which is an inspirational story. And then Tour Tycho Town, right there in Tycho Crater on the moon. All of Diane Floyd Bang's books are available at B4R Store. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. My name is Marianne Fairmouth, and uh, I'm your hostess for tonight's episode. And I'm thrilled to have with me William Burkhart, a, uh, an award-winning author. And um, we were just talking about um, the, the different things that uh, Bill does to, to support authors. And uh, not only has he written 50 uh, books, but he also has uh, seminars and workshops and newsletters and all different kinds of things to to help uh, people that are interested in the craft of writing. So, so Bill, tell us a little bit about some of the things you offer. Mm -hmm. I know that here um, at Authors Marketing International, uh, we have a wonderful conference coming up in July, and uh, we're thrilled to have people like you as a part of it, because the more people like you that we can work with, the more we can expand our platform and help other writers. But tell us about some of the things you offer and what you have coming up. Well, it started with the books because I was, I've been asked at Oklahoma State University to teach a series of classes. And after I did a couple of those, I realized, you know, we need a book. We need a textbook. And I know they're writing books out there, but, and I'm not slamming anybody, but I didn't like any of them very much. I thought they were kind of windy and, <laughs> you know, 12 examples to make the same point and excerpts from work. And I thought, I just want something that makes it plain and doesn't try to overcomplicate it, just says, look, here's what you need to do. So I started writing these, really thinking I was just going to use them in the class. 
And, and then, you know, that when we published them, they started doing really well. What surprised me was what, what was the real plus was that they took off as audiobooks, even better than in print. Uh, and I had recorded those, I guess I can admit this, really just on a whim, because my wife, Laura, is a terrific actress and had done some audiobooks. So we set up this whole home studio thing so that she could record audiobooks at home. And I thought, well, that doesn't look that hard. I, I could do that. <laughs> I'll just sit down and do these red sneaker books on writing. And that's how they really started to catch fire. People were downloading them to their phones, I guess, and listening to them on their drive to work or whatever. And that started to catch steam. So anyway, I added all the other, other stuff that came later. Now, the writing conference I've been doing for, I'm not sure, 10 or 12 years, something like that now. And, and that's just grown every year. And that's just a blast because, of course, you get to see people and meet them and work with them in person. That's in Oklahoma City every Labor Day weekend, writercon.org. Uh, here's, to me, this is perhaps the best sign of that, that people really like and appreciate this conference. Last year, during the lockdown, of course, we added streaming. And yet we have the biggest numbers for participants, for attendees. We have the biggest numbers we'd ever had in the middle of the lockdown. Now, uh, about two thirds of those people were watching it at, from home, streaming it. But still, that told me that it doesn't matter what else is going on. People are serious about wanting to write. Well, I think that's one thing that COVID has brought to us in a positive way is it, it made all of us stop in our tracks and reevaluate, you know, what's important to us. And I think that, I mean, I know I came out with a new book during COVID because I, I saw a need and, 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 and you looked at that need. And, and so I think the craft of writing uh, might have been expanded during yes. COVID. So, so this, this conference you're having, and you talked to me about it and when we talked in the in the green room before we started here, this conference you're having on Labor Day, what what kinds of people can come to that, uh, Bill? Can can um, people that maybe are thinking about writing a book can come to that, or people that have already written a book and maybe they want to try to get an, an agent? Or I mean, what kinds of people would would this conference benefit? Absolutely, all of the above. I make a real effort to you know we have many sessions, of course, going on at one time. So we've got a wide range: fiction, nonfiction audio, poetry, uh, memoir, historical, whatever people are writing, all the genres. And we also realize that people are at different places in their career. So for instance, on Friday, we always have what I call the newbie track, you know, beginning sessions for people who are relatively new about it, maybe just started or maybe even just thinking about starting. Although I have noticed that a lot of people I know who are fairly seasoned still attend the <laughs> the newbie sessions, perhaps to make sure, you know, they're not, they haven't missed anything. I, I, I know how they feel. The writing world seems to be changing so quickly these days that you've got to keep up. But we also, of course, have higher level things for people who have been at it a while or, uh, you know, people who are uh, at various stages of their career. And of course, we have agents there uh, ready to be pitched. If you've got a manuscript and you think you're ready to go forward, we've got editors and publishers represented and we try and have contests for people who want to enter those. There's something for everybody there. Well, I think it sounds wonderful. And I think that the other thing that, that COVID has taught me anyway, and you know, I'm a career recruiter, career consultant, career coach, is about collaboration. I think right. the more that we can collaborate with each other and help each other become our best selves, um, everybody benefits from that. And so I applaud you for not only being the successful author that you are, but also for, for going a step beyond and, and, and expanding your platform to help others. So uh, I think that's, that's wonderful. So do you have any other books on the horizon or what are you thinking about going forward that, that you're going to be doing, Bill? Of mine? Well, my most recent book, which I think is hovering over my shoulder right now, is <laughs> Splitsville, uh, which is, uh, once again, a legal thriller. But it's the first book in a new series I'm starting with a female attorney in Seattle who starts off as a divorce attorney, but as you might guess, it uh, she changes a lot over the course of the first book. It gets uh, more intense for her. Uh, anyway, I just, uh, you know, I, when I started with Primary Justice, that introduced my first series character, Ben Kincaid, and that ran for 19 books. Uh, 
Wow. And who knows, I might get back to it someday. Because doesn't it seem wrong to end at 19? You got to round that off with a nice <laughs> base 10 number. Uh, and, and then I just finished a series with a character called Daniel Pike, which was uh, very successful. I kind of took a break in the middle because I wanted to write everything, other things. I did a young, a book, young adult series. I did two historical novels. I did two books of poetry which uh, probably got the best reviews I've ever had. Not necessarily the best royalty statements, but <laughs> some terrific reviews. And I thought, okay, it's time to begin. I, I wonder, at some point, I thought, I've done so many of these courtroom books. You know, I, I, if I have to go into jury selection again, I'm just going to shoot myself. But <laughs> after taking a break, it seemed fun again. And the Daniel Pike books were a hit, but I thought, no, I'm not going to do this forever. Six, that's a good number. Six, that's good. The last one's called Final Verdict for a reason, because <laughs> it ends the series. And now I'm trying something new with Splitsville. So if you like that sort of thing, I'd urge people, give it a chance. I think you might enjoy it. Well, I think that's exciting. And I applaud you for for all the wonderful things you're doing. So let's go ahead and, and, and stop at this point and give our... Um, Sponsors a chance to do their thing and we'll come right back. Publishing marketing package for authors. $1,500 value, save 40% now. Includes a six piece marketing kit of 250 bookmarks, 250 business cards, 250 postcards, one table banner, one table runner, and 50 download cards. Plus, book cover design, ebook creation, PDF setups, upload to Ingram Spark, scroll placement, video commercial, and interview on IBS plus much more. Email bourgeoismedia at look.com for details or bourgeoismedia.com. Hi, I'm Mel Greenberg, author of Running With Our Eyes Closed, book one in the Empty Nested series. To the world, Samantha has the perfect life. Three wonderful children, a loving husband, so she thought, and a life split between Dallas and Italy. When her youngest leaves for college, it all comes crashing down, forcing Samantha to re-examine everything. Over seven days in one of the most romantic countries in the world, Samantha faces the past she thought she'd overcome and begins to redefine her role as a woman, a wife, and a mother. What would you do if you had to put your life on hold to care for a loved one? Well, during COVID, almost all of us have been doing just that. I'm Charlotte Canyon, award-winning author, actress, and speaker. And my book, you have to laugh to keep from crying, shows you how you can revive, thrive, and survive with four golden rules. You have to love one another. You have to respect one another. You have to have patience with one another. And most of all, you've got to forgive one another. I'm Charlotte Canyon, and I approve this message. Welcome to the Indie Beacon Show, where readers can discover great new indie authors. Find us on all major podcast systems and YouTube. Join Mary Ann Fairmont on today's show. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. My name is Mary Ann Fairmont, and I'm the hostess for this episode. Uh, tonight, I have the distinct honor of having William Burkhart with me, a very, very uh, well-established author that's produced over 50 books and also um, offers all kinds of writing seminars and workshops and uh, newsletters for um, writers and authors in the craft of writing. And um, uh, Bill, tell us a little bit about, um, if, if somebody's interested in, in, in purchasing some of your really cool books that have done so <laughs> well, or, or, or maybe being a part of your either online uh, workshops or, or coming in person, mm -hmm. how do they find out about that? Well, I assume they can find my books anywhere that you normally buy books online or in person. Like Amazon uh, and... Sure, absolutely. Okay. As far as, uh, as the conference, the WriterCon, the annual Writers Conference, the website is writercon.org. That's W-R-I-T-E-R-C-O-N.org. Um, anybody can email me anytime about anything, like if you want to be added to the email the e-newsletter that's free just send send me your email list and i'll add you to it my email address is will burn like the first four letters of both names at gmail.com so it's w-i-l-l-b-e-r-n 
at gmail.com. There's a Facebook page for the Red Sneaker Writers Center. You have to ask to get in, but I don't know why. I let everybody in. I just go in every oh, morning and name, accept. Red, where did that name Red Sneakers come from? I mean, it's a cool name and it sticks, but where did it come from? Good question. I don't know. It's something that occurred to me one day because like I said, I was trying to get past what I saw with some of the you know, ex excessive verbiage and some of the other writing books around that sometimes seem to, or speakers you hear at conferences who I, I think are trying to make it more complicated. I wanted to go the other direction. I wanted to, I mean, it's never going to be easy or simple, but I wanted to make it simpler and kind of get down to the brass tacks. You know, here's what you need to know. So that's what made me think of my red sneakers that I love because they're flashy, they're attractive, but, you know, they're not putting on the dog. They're just, they are what they are. And here's a practical approach to writing is what I was trying well, to I say. Here's something anyone can do. Well, that, I love that. I think that Red Sneakers name is, 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 is really uh, super good because I think a lot of, a lot of would-be or are going to be writers are very intimidated. And I think that, um, you know, for me, I started writing back in 2016 and I think that um, you know I, I was a little bit intimidated too but I think that you know uh, the name kind of is saying hey look put on your sneakers and let's go let's do this <laughs> right and I think that's great well we are just uh, delighted that uh, you have come on to um, the Indie Beacon Radio and are part of Authors International uh, marketing organization. Um, I really do believe that COVID has brought us some wonderful things. And I think some of those things are that people are looking at, you know, expanding their platform and being their best selves. And I, for me, writing is like medicine. Writing is like, you know, it, it expands your whole, don't you think, Will, Bill, it kind of it expands who you are and mm -hmm. lets you become more than who you are. Don't you agree with Absolutely. that? Absolutely. If more people read books, as opposed to other things, we'd have a happier, happier world. Less well, and, you know, uh, I believe that. Prozac and, I, and more oh, I know. contentness. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a career coach and a placement specialist. And I think that when we're in alignment with who we are and we use our gifts, more importantly, like what you do, which is a beautiful mm -hmm. example, we use those gifts to help others. It's just a win-win. And so I applaud you. Not only are you a very successful author of 50 books, but more importantly, you've taken your craft, you've taken your, your success, and you've, you've opened it up to help others. So, so thank you so much. We're thrilled to have you. Uh, please, again, give us, uh, let the people out there know where they can find you. And uh, we certainly hope that you will continue to be a part of Authors Marketing International. And um, I'm thrilled to be the hostess to be able to interview you. But tell people where we can find you. Well, the easiest way is probably my website, and you can contact me that there if you want to. WilliamBernhardt.com couldn't be simpler than that. <laughs> it just and it's got information about everything we've talked about there. Right. Well, you've really piqued my my interest, and I I might see you on Labor Day because I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Come and on I down. I wish you would. I might, and I, I certainly hope that you keep in touch with us here at. Authors Absolutely. Marketing International, because again, I think it's all about collaboration. I think COVID's brought that to us. So again, um, please check uh, Bill out and uh, not only his books, his many wonderful books, and especially his new one uh, that's come out that's called, uh, tell us again what that's called. Splitsville. Splitsville. Because that's what Kenzie's law firm is called because they specialize in divorce. See? Uh oh, <laughs> But that's not really what the book's about. Well, let's take the split bill <laughs> and call it whole bill. And okay. let's all make us all whole and all work together to expand our craft of writing. Fabulous. My name is Marianne Femmel. I am your hostess for Authors Marketing International, Indie Beacon Radio. And uh, I'm thrilled to, hear, uh, to be here tonight to talk to Bill and uh, to be a part of this wonderful effort. So thanks again. And uh, we look forward to working with you, Bill. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching or listening to The Indie Beacon Show, produced by Dion Bourgeois for the Authors Marketing International LLC, copyright 2021. It's over by Dion Bourgeois. If you would like to be a sponsor of the show, please email us at authorsmarketing at outlook.com. If you would like to be on the show, please complete the form found on our website at indiebeacon.com. You may also watch previous year's shows on the website. Music is Solid of Words, created for Indie Beacon, 